Monsters, this little monster girl Desi coming at ya. And today I'll be doing a follow up video of my last press this and that topic. Last time was Ed's World crossed over with Has Been Hotel. And if you haven't watched that one, there will be a link down in the description. But today I'll be doing Ed's World Next Generation's crossed over with Has Been Hotel, which means I'll be drawing my fan kids as demons. So, with all that said, on to the video. Alrighty, so a bit of context for those who haven't been following me for very long or only follow my YouTube channel. Or maybe you just now found this video. Ed's World Next Generation is about a group of kids who are just living their day-to-day -day lives, having fun, hanging out, and in general just causing trouble. You know, just being kids. And learning to live in a world ruled over by a dictator. And these four kids are Ethan, Toby, Max, and Theo the sons of the main cast of Ed's World. Though before I had these four, I actually had three other kids in mind. My very first idea for Ed's World Next Generation was to use background characters. Either just building a story on the background characters I saw in the show, or focusing on the main cast and the families they build. With that said, I actually had three other kids in mind before I came up with the next gen that I currently have. The three kids at the very last scene of the end were actually what I favored over the others. And they were originally supposed to be my main focus. But the first Edtober rolled around by the time I had joined the fandom. And I created the designs for the characters I now use. And quite recently I actually dug up this old memory, so... I've kind of come to regret my decision to completely scrap the first idea. In hindsight, I probably should have just fused the two ideas. So, in this speed paint, I decided to add those three kids, who I named Ricky, Nikki, and Tally. As well as Max's younger sister, Alex, who is a recent addition to my AU. And Taylor, who is actually from a sub-AU known as Happy Family. And for those of you who don't know, Anya, who is Toby's mom, actually died when he was a baby. Happy Family AU, is a concept where she survived and later in life, when Toby was around seven years old, they ended up adopting Taylor who is a war orphan because Anya couldn't have more kids. And also for the speed paint, I messed with their ages a little bit. Originally, Ricky, Nikki, and Tally were born before the war started, while the four boys ended up being born during the war. And of course, Alex and Taylor were born later on too. But since I don't really know how age would work in Has Been Hotel, at least for the demons actually born in Hell, I thought this was a good chance to mess with their ages a little bit. With that said, Ricky, Nikki, and Tally are still the oldest out of the groups. Then the second oldest are Toby and Theo. Then there's Max. And Ethan is the youngest out of the boys, and obviously Alex and Taylor are the youngest out of all of them. In this world, I think Nikki, Ricky, and Tally would probably would probably be the demon equivalent of being 20 years old. Theo and Toby are still 17. Max is 16. Ethan is 15. Taylor is 7 years old, and Alex is 6. Which I think is a pretty fair dynamic, if I do say so. And having said that, I'll also make sure to put in a little bit more info about the characters' personalities. And pretty much how they view the world of Hell, having been raised there. Though I can confidently say that being born in Hell probably means there's absolutely no chance of any of them ascending to heaven but they're probably a big headache for Charlie and the rest of them to deal with whenever they visit the hotel just to mess around. Oh, and also before anybody tries to tell me, yes, I am fully aware, at least now I am, that all the background characters in Ed's World Legacy are all based on people who supported Ed's World and the development of the Legacy. 
But that's beside the point, so I'm just gonna draw the kids. Okay, first off, we'll start with the blue boys. And the first thing you need to know about Nikki and Theo is actually that they're half-siblings. Before Nikki was born, Tom and Susan had a bit of a cold spot where they broke up for a while. Tom got with another moth demon, but she later died during a cleansing and he took in Nikki. And ever since, Susan has been his adopted mother. Compared to Theo, who takes more after his mother, Ricky is a lot more extroverted. I mean, Nikki. Why the heck did I choose their names like this? What the heck is wrong with me? But him and Nikki still get along pretty well. The older brother is fun-loving. He's the type of person to always show when he's having a good time. And compared to Theo, who's a bit more standoffish, he's seen as the more confident brother. But in spite of this, the two do get along pretty well. They share a lot of the same interests, like music. So there's never really been a time when they couldn't talk to each other about their interests. And because Nikki's so used to it, he can read his brother pretty well. Design-wise, I wanted to give him a more orangey color palette. Since he is technically the opposite of his little brother, I thought that would be a good idea to show the contrast between the two. Especially since his mother had two regular eyes, so instead of a blacked out eye, I gave him one big eye with an X-shaped pupil, similar to how the Theo and Tom's wings are. Though Theo's kind of just turn into a hoodie-like sh shoal or something. I don't know what to call it. I didn't have a lot of trouble working in some of Tom's colors into Ricky's design. I said Ricky instead of Nikki again. Good lord. And actually, it was a lot of fun to draw the two siblings with such a sharp contrast between the two. And of course, adding different accent colors helped tie it in their designs together just to show that they're related, even if it's not super obvious. I also made sure to give Theo a checkered pattern on his fluff and his little, I guess you could call them ears, antennas, antenna fluff. Since in the regular AU, both him and Susan have checkered pattern hair undercuts under their hair. And having said that, Theo is actually a lot closer to his mom than his dad. And Nikki is obviously closer to Tom than he is Susan. But that doesn't mean the family doesn't get along. Sure, they fight sometimes, but that's just to be expected. In general, Tom is probably a pretty decent father. Not the best, and definitely, for hell's standards, just decent. Honestly, I can totally see him as the type of dad to say, don't take shit from other demons. But instead of giving his sons any tips on how to do that, he just takes them out drinking and then passes out, making the two carry him home later. And also leaving Susan to comprehend the stupidity of her husband, and wishing that he could be a bit more responsible especially when it comes to giving their kids advice. And now we have the purple siblings. And while I did end up coloring Alex first because I was really excited to get to her color palette, I'm going to start with Ricky. Yep, pretty much just going by oldest first. Ricky is basically the perfect fusion between his two parents. He has an extremely tall build like his father, but has a more rounder face like his mother. But instead of giving him one eye, I decided to give him three eyes. And instead of making his wings a cape like his father, I decided just to attach them to his arms, with a poncho-like hood to go over them. Personality-wise, Ricky is very bright and colorful. He just has a bigger-than-life personality. He's a very sweet person, and he absolutely adores his family. In fact, if you say anything bad about any of them, he will absolutely wreck you. He's especially very, very protective of his mother and his little sister. So if you do anything to make either of them cry, he will find a way to erase you from existence because you deserve it for making them cry. And despite his often goofy and childlike personality, all of this makes Ricky take his big brother role very seriously. 
Like, it's pretty much a switch between goofy and serious. Next is the middle child. Obviously, appearance-wise, Max takes after his dad. But his more feminine appearance is due to the fact that he's transgender, but is more of a femboy. He doesn't quite have a high and mighty attitude, but he does still have a lot of confidence in his appearance. Design-wise, I decided to give him tiny wings as well as a red halo to match his little sisters. The two weren't born with their halos, they just kind of appeared one day. And nobody really bothers to question why they have them, just because, in general, a fallen angel having kids with a demon is kind of a weird concept. And in Max's original design, he has heterochromia. I think that's what it's called. Where his eyes are two different colors. And compared to his older brother, Max isn't a very strong demon. And pretty much likes avoiding fights when he can. That being said, that's a complete contrast to his little sister. And out of all the siblings, Alex looks the absolute most like her mother, other than having her father's ears and eye color. And believe me when I say that Alex is a little spitfire. In fact, when she grows up, she wants to be one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse so she can get back at the angels who made mommy cry and put them in time out forever. Yeah, she really doesn't like heaven or angels. Doubt being as young as she is, she probably doesn't really grasp the concept of what's going on. All she knows is that the angels hurt mommy, and she can't watch the fireworks on extermination day because the angels are still stick around for a while. Well, the one night a year she gets to watch pretty fireworks, she can't because she's got to go to bed early on that day. So yeah, screw heaven. And though being only six years old, she is the absolute strongest out of her siblings. But considering how young she is, she doesn't really know how to use her powers yet, so it's still in the development phase. Matt and Amanda are probably super protective of their kids, and pretty much make sure that none of them travel the city alone. They gotta keep their babies away from the baddies that wanna hurt them. So. Yeah, Matt gets very aggro if anybody approaches his kids, let alone his cute little wife, and yeah, pretty much. And next up we have the green siblings, or should I say the green kitties. I actually had a lot more fun with these two than I did with everybody else. While their coloring wasn't hard to get, I just really enjoy drawing cats. And these two are a pretty good mix between their parents, at least personality-wise. And it was actually a lot of fun to mix up the two color palettes, too. While I gave Ethan brown fur like his dad, I decided to give Tally purple fur like her mom, but to kind of mess with the shading a bit. And despite having her mom's body type, I decided to give her the manticore bits, while keeping the whole punk look for herself. Tally is a very headstrong and perky girl. She is also a pretty big prankster like her dad. She enjoys puns but aren't very good at them. And she loves drawing and reading comics too. She also absolutely adores her baby brother. But between the two of them, Ethan's powers are definitely a lot stronger than Tally's. And also compared to how Ethan will be when he's older, he definitely has the more chill personality. Though right now both of them are just bundles of energy. With her father, Tally can breathe fire, but isn't very good at it. In fact, she really hates spicy food, so using her fire breath is kind of a kick to the face. She also really idolizes her mom, and pretty much strives to have as much confidence as her mother has. And is also kind of jealous that Ethan ended up getting the cute fluffy wings while she got pink sharp wings. While Ethan, on the other hand, is jealous of her sharp fat wings while he's got fluffy cute wings. Not a really uh, hurt your pride kind of jealousy, just he thinks they look cooler. And also, yes, I know that Ethan looks like a chubby little girl, but that's kind of the point. Vice versa, since Ethan has his father's body type, he's actually a lot more like his mother. And while it's already pretty obvious that the kids don't dress completely like their parents, 
especially considering the time periods and outfits that their parents wear. Ethan is currently a more dress for comfort kind of kid and isn't really one for packing on the jewelry, but will still wear it if his mother asks him to. Again, like his father, he's a big jokester, and he likes to cause a lot of trouble for demons who are just passing by. While Ethan didn't inherit his father's fire breath, he still is very physically strong, which is something he inherited from both of his parents. So he likes literally doing the whole comedic cartoon thing of dropping anvils on unsuspecting demons. This kid is kind of savage. Though in the regular AU it would be water balloons because dropping an anvil on a person would probably kill them if it hit them. No, it would most definitely kill them. But he doesn't have to worry about that in hell, I guess. <laughs> oh god, this is terrible. But that being said, Ethan does have a very sweet personality towards his friends, and really loves them. Since he's been the youngest for a while, it's pretty safe to say that he's been doted on quite a bit. Despite being the strongest out of his friends, everybody has tried to protect him just because he's the youngest and the smallest. Despite being 15, he has not go gone through his growth spurt yet, so his voice is still very squeaky which also makes everybody think he's a girl, considering his long eyelashes. But trust me, he definitely inherited his dad's height. He gonna be a big boy. And it looks like once again we're ending on the color red. <laughs> I think this is the third time, but oh well. I actually had a lot of fun with this one too, because uh, if there's one thing I really like drawing Toby with is whenever he's a horned animal. I always like drawing him with either one horn or with one of his horns being broken. One thing I saw with a lot of the fan kids is that they would either have the horns like Tord or black eyes like Tom. Or sometimes both. But I kind of like the idea that the horns would be different for everybody related to Tord just to kind of switch things up a little bit. I know a few artists do that too, but it's not very common. Toby and Taylor have a really good relationship. Toby is the big overprotective brother because his sister is so much younger than he is. So I think he's like borderline helicopter parent. And just like Alex, Taylor being so young probably doesn't really realize the whole situation of hell. Sure, she's used to it, and she knows that there are bad things, but she doesn't really know how to, like, take care of herself yet. So her parents and Toby are probably, like, always really tense whenever they go out with her. Though Anya and Tord were probably that way with Toby when he was a baby, too. Heck, I don't think Tord would have let Anya leave the house while pregnant with both of them. That being said, when it came down to his design, in my head I was kind of torn between whether I'd give him a fluffy tail or an imp tail, because overall Toby does look a lot more like Tord in the regular AU, but he has his mother's personality. So with Toby, I tried to make it look like he was leaning more towards the imp version rather than the demon sheep that Anya is. But I still made sure to give him the split hair colors and the fluff on this, at least the spine of the tail. And one thing I didn't mention in Anya's part is that her tail can actually split open into a giant pair of jaws. Which is something that actually goes over to Taylor rather than Toby. And in another AU for Toby, he ends up being a clone between his mother and father ends up having patched skin, which I instead gave to Taylor since Toby was already kind of oh, almost overly designed as is with the color mismatch. When it came down to doing their eyes, I gave Toby the mismatched eyes like his dad and just gave Taylor two X's in her eyes to kind of mirror both towards one eye and Anya's hard eyes. A fun fact about their eyes is that they actually change. Like, whenever Taylor sees her little friends, they turn into hearts, and whenever Toby gets really pissed off, they just solid out the color. 
it gets hurt, both eyes turn into X's. And Taylor's eyes, when she gets pissed off, they just become a solid color. Uh, Strength-wise, Toby isn't as strong as Ethan when he's older, but does want to become a deal maker like his dad. And when Taylor grows up, she wants to be like her mom. And she also wants to be able to see the human world when she gets older, too. I still don't know how that works in Hasbin Hotel universe, but eh, knowing Taylor, she'll find a way regardless. Uh, Personality-wise, Taylor is very headstrong like Anya. She's extremely stubborn and doesn't always think things completely through like her dad. Pretty much her biggest goal in life right now is just to make it to the human world. But unlike Toby, she doesn't want to be a deal maker, so she'll probably pester him a lot to take her with him whenever he goes to make a deal with somebody and just ditches him and then he has to go find her. To put it simply, she is a handful. Yes, when she gets older, her horns will start coming in and they'll be spiral like her mom's. And my kids are all done. I can definitely say that I had a lot of fun with the speed paint. Almost as much fun as I had with the parents. I don't know if I said this in my first video, but for a while I've been a very casual fan of Hasbin Hotel, pretty much picking it up and putting it back down every once in a while. And if you've seen the Addicted music video, you probably know why the interest was sparked again. And as I'm recording this last bit, you probably also know that Ed's World has been brought up again too. So it's highly possible that for these cross this and that videos, Ed's World will be winning most of the polls. <laughs> but it has been suggested to me to do a reverse of this AU and to draw the has-beens in the Ed's World universe. And to also do a more casual crossover where the Ed's World characters in their own timeline meet the has -beens which both sound really interesting and I may touch upon that again if there's more interest for them. And I've also thought to do, um, like if other subjects for the cross this and that polls I post like on Amino and on the channel, that I should probably do those too if there's enough interest for, like to do the most popular and then the second most popular out of the polls. Since I did especially really love doing Has Been Hotel with all the different colors and possibilities for character designs. And it really helped me break away from my being very accurate with anatomy kind of thing. Which is sort of a weird thing to do when you have such a cartoony style. So yeah, I look forward to more of this stuff in the future. That being said, I actually got two pieces of fan art to show off. And on Amino, it was messaged to me asking if fan art was okay. Although that question happened while I'm recording this last bit, so I'll just answer it here. If you have any fan art for me, I am happy to show it off at the end of each of my cross this and that videos. Because in general, I just really like seeing my ideas and other people's styles. It's always really cool. So yeah, if you have fan art, go ahead and send it to me. I'd really like to see it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. And if you want to support me, you can go to either Tapas or my Patreon. But if you don't have the money to support me on Patreon, I highly suggest going to Tapas because just viewing my comics helps with ad revenue. You can also donate coins that are free to earn on the app. So shameless plugs aside, with all that said, watch out for the monsters under the bed and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!